what's up, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another session of Coffee and Martial Arts. Salute, 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 cheers. Oh, yes, sir. Excellent coffee today and better guests. Yes, we have my good friend, martial arts master. And I say martial arts because uh, he'll tell you he's a little bit <coughs> obsessive, passionate about the martial arts, of course. So he's one of my guys, that's for sure. So, But before we go to our guest, you know me, I have to say the proper announcement. So we, I got to remind you that we are going live through our Facebook page, Master Frank Soto Kinetic Dragon. So please like the page, follow us there, share it. Okay, that really helps us with the algorithm. Okay, and if you want to support us with this video, send us some of some of those beautiful stars on Facebook. That really helps. Okay, so uh, we go live through our uh, Master Frank Soto Kinetic Dragon page. We're also going live through the Internacional with a C Hall of Fame of Argentina. Yes, sir. This is a nice page from a great, great group of martial artists. Okay, led by Master Juan Martin Alvarez from Buenos Aires. Saludos, Master. Okay, uh, he is the man behind the group, and this group does a nice magazine. Okay, they put it on paper and digital, of course. Okay, where they share the martial arts to everybody. So if you can uh, like and subscribe there, that also helps. Okay, we're also going live through our YouTube channel, the Kinetic Dragon channel. Also, like, subscribe, and click on the little bell so you get notified every time we go live. Yes, sir. So, today, like I said, we have an amazing, amazing guest, okay? This is one of those guys that when you introduce him or you get introduced by him or you meet him, uh, you think of him as martial arts or martial artists first, than a person okay he's this guy is really really one of those guys who embodies the art okay very passionate very very talented martial artist i met him back i think it was uh 2015 at the sacramento gathering the martial arts collective society gathering and uh he did a demo there with his uh lovely wife and they did an amazing amazing job they also taught seminars and stuff and he was there with his uh maestro but I don't want to spoil the story. I'm going to shut up now, okay? So let's bring in, okay, Maestro Nelson Pinto from Farang Musul and the Filipino martial arts. What's up? Hola. <laughs> Thank you for being here, my friend. Well, it's an honor for me. You know, I uh, like I was told you a few minutes ago. I um, I think you, it's it's for me. I'm a huge fan of yours, oh. and uh, I think you are the one that deserved the interview from me. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is your hour, my friend, and it's an honor to have you here. I, it's really, it's really an honor, and a pleasure also, because uh, like I said, to have here a passionate martial artist who shares that that eagerness to learn more and to you know always we're always talking about this and 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 etc it's it's really it's really cool so uh let's just bring some of the comments we have already people saying hello that's okay, okay. with you okay. okay antonio says i know master nelson pinto awesome person and exemplary martial artist hola antonio nice. i'm sensei antonio castro oh cool Iron Tiger, hello everyone. Hi, Master Pinto, let's rock. Barang. Nice. Hybrid Karate, aloha. Sifu, Sifu, uh, Sifu Renato from France. He's a direct student from Angel, Grandmaster Angel Garcia from Cajo Campbell. Nice, respect, thank you, it's an honor. Let's see, hello everyone, hello Master Nelson Pinto. And in the house, Washington. Alicia Aranda, hola. Okay. Lee Gajing, salud, maestros, mis respetos, respect, gracias. Hola to Puerto Rico. <laughs> ah, Puerto Rico, right. Jose Luis Molina, saludos from Venezuela. Renato Bern, alojas. Aloha. <laughs> 
Okay. Liga Jing says, big hug to my brother, Master Nelson from Puerto Rico. There you go. Okay. Another familiar face here. Grandmaster Jorvi Bello. Oh, Boa tarde. Como está? So Olá, so irmão so Bello. Outro português aqui na nossa casa. <laughs> nice, nice. Hello, Maestro Ribello. It's always nice to see you, sir. Grand Master. Okay. Good old Catherine Sumter. Hello, Master Frank and Master Nelson. Cheers from CCDP Worldwide, Squim, Washington, USA. Cool. Okay. Rob Ray. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. Respect to you all. Respect. Hi, brother. From Florida. Nice. Sensei Axel Cardenas. Hello from Chile. Maga Chong, saludos, Master Pinto de Guanajuato, Mexico. Farang, wow. My hermano from Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, I just got to say thank you, my friend, for accepting the invitation. It's truly an honor to have you here. I'm so happy that uh, we got to set up the date because I tried to uh, invite you before, but you were moving from places and uh, you've been busy. So, uh, Thank you. Let's just bring some one more comment. Laura Espinosa, maestra. Saludos, maestros. Felicidades por el programa. All the way to Chile. Gracias. Saludos. And right, Ray Celano. Hello, Hello. my friend, Master Pinto. Farang from Colorado. <laughs> nice. Okay, so every time we have a new guest, I ask the same uh, opening question. Could you share? a little bit of your background, how you started in the martial arts, just a little bit because we only have one hour show, so uh, we won't have enough time, but uh, how you started and how you got to where you're at right now, please. So I'm going to try to minimize, you know, I always say that my name is Nelson Pinto and I have a problem, you know, and it's martial arts, right? You know, but uh, I start the martial arts, well, I was in France since I was 12, 13, but eventually, when I was 15, I between 15 and 16, that's my teacher, Grandmaster at the album, like Papa, like a father for me. And um, I, uh, I I just love Mr. Miyagi. I know that can be kind of cheesy. No, no. But I love I love Karate Kid. And in that time, I don't, you know, I, I love Van Damme. You know, of course, that time we have Charles Nagger, Bruce Willis, Stallone, all that idols. But I like my, the, the, the the that um i know that he was not the real sensei but i like what he embodies why what what he represents right and sensei miyagi i just like you know the respect between student and master and it was more that it was more that technique because the technique in karate kid we all can agree it was not the best one <laughs> but i love mr miyagi with the lessons of life and I, you know, and I was a kid already, and I want to be, I want to be a sensei. I want to be in control of myself, and I want to, to reach that center, that peace that he represents. And I thought it was such, you know, that man, you know, uh, that mental development and everything, that lessons of life. And I just want to be like him. It was not even based on the technique. So, but it was because of Sensei Miyagi that I went to martial arts. And I was a kid. You know, eventually, you know, I see like actors like Jackie Chan and Van Damme. You know, I want to be fast like Jackie Chan. I want to do the splits and kick like Van Damme. You know, it's normal. But that took me to Karate Shotokan and Aikido Yamahiyo. And I was very lucky because my teachers, um, this 30 years ago, you know, my Karate Shotokan, they're connected with my, my teacher, Portuguese, was PT, through the technical director, was Vilasa Pinto. He trained with Masatoshi Nakayama, so it was direct student from Funakoshi. And then the Yaikido, my teacher, were, the organization was related with Morihiro Saito, was a, the last, was a student that stayed until the last day with Moria Iwishiba. Right, so I, I was very lucky, even in Portugal, to have, have access to such excellent teachers. Uh, eventually, I went. I met Cru Carlos Pedro, and I will show a picture. He's still like, we still talk. You know, Cru Carlos Pedro. It uh, was my number one Portuguese teacher. You know, uh, it's like a, 
Carlos, Carlos Pedro, uh, Cru Carlos Pedro, um, taught me Taekwondo ITF and WTF. And, Can you show uh, the photo again, sir? Sorry. Sorry? Can, could uh, you show that the picture again? Yeah. I didn't have it on a big screen. So that okay. Cru okay. Carlos Pedro me, me he taught me how to fight, you know? There Excellent. It is. You know, uh, in, in Thank uh, you. I hope, I, I hope Cru Carlos Pedro is watching right now. He's teaching. Muay Thai Boran class, that's what he was told. He, he teach Muay Thai, right now he only cons concentrate Muay Thai Boran, Kravi Kravong, and two, and, and boxing. What he's very passionate by Cuban and Mexican boxing right now. Nice. And uh, so because of him, I started Taekwondo ITF, learning a lot of components of Aikido. And he was old commando, so he's teaching stick and knife, whatever he can. Take me to all the seminars. And uh, I started learning kickboxing. I'm a fifth degree kickboxing under him, WKA, by the way, World Kickboxing Association and Karate Association, in the, right? And uh, and that was many years ago that he became like number one teacher at that time. And I start I start fighting, going to Spain and France and in Portugal in a kind of national selection team and so on. So I... Uh, yeah, he was a big influence to me. And even today, we keep in contact, uh, and he's very proud of me. And I was happy that you don't have no grudge, you know, that, you know, eventually what happened was I was looking for more. You know, I remember reading the Budo International magazine, the Cinturon Negro, uh -huh. uh, from Alfredo Tucci, that I had the honor to meet him personally. And uh, I heard about this system. Modern Farai Musu. And I was very curious because I started being also, in that time, Gracie's coming up. And I saw Grandmaster Diablo was, I was also interested in massage and healing arts. I became also a, a massage therapist. And I thought that Grandmaster Diablo have the healing arts and meditation and trapping kind of GKD concepts that he put it. But I also have all these components of Korean martial arts a very nice. comprehensive system from the Warang arts and Taekwondo, Apkido, Kuxulwan, Warangdo. He kind of did like uh, this very complete system and other concepts. Anyway, the system of grappling, trappling, boxing, kickboxing, giant locks. And I was like, I, I want to learn this, you know, where I can find this. Eventually, I start training with him. And that time I have VHS. I remember your story. Right, learning with the VHS, it was exactly like me. I'm studying all that VHS back and forth and start having problems in the manuals and I'm training my students, right? In that time, I was just teaching boxing, Muay Thai, kickboxing, Taekwondo, taking my students. So I was already, I was also in Apkido, I do Gundo. I already have dropped totally the, the Japanese arts, not because I, I, I don't like it. It was, it was the evolution that took me. And eventually I told, you know what? I contact a, a grandmaster. He also, I, I was talking with him. He's like, I, I want to go to United States. And he told me when next month. And he told me, okay. So I, uh, I moved to San Francisco, and I was, ah, uh, oh, my wife and I. That was a funny one. Uh, you remember that she elbowed me? Yes, yes, <laughs> on, I remember the, that. Oh, my, and then she kissed me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I moved to San Francisco, like you did for LA, and I spent almost a year with him. And I graduated from Musul, and I uh, looked that one, oh, and she's like, Oh, and I just keep going. She kissed me, <laughs> and everybody's laughing, <laughs> and I'm laughing, I'm trying not to. So, anyway. Um, so, so Grandmaster Diablo became like a father for me, you know, nice. uh, for a wood, I don't know if, he, if uh, that's Master Vega from Puerto Rico, amazing martial artist with my Grandmaster Diablo on the, with the glasses. So, so who saw that? I will show a picture of my teacher, Grandmaster Diablo. Let me see if I have, that was one of his cover magazine, Taekwondo Times. Nice. 
right? Um, and I, uh, I just want to learn the system. I, I thought I thought it was so fascinating, so so complete, right? And um, and when you so, but anyway, I don't want to start just going going. If you want me to talk about, no, no, please, please, this is your hour, my friend. Because I'm like I'm Portuguese. I like to talk, you know. <laughs> Well, this is what the show is about. So amazing. So, <laughs> so, so uh, for who don't know what is uh, Farang Musu, um, it's a very comprehensive, comprehensive system. My teacher uh, learned from several. They had, he start in, to start back. You know, the first influence from my teacher, by the way, was he started Shaolin Kempo, Chinese Kempo. Nice. And for who don't know, uh, Grandmaster Michael Vialba, its heritage is Mexican. So, so uh, right, and he have a lot of That's his family. That's why he's El Guapo. That's it's why. Guapo, exactly. Yeah, right. Very Guapo, very handsome. And um, I will always joke with him, very handsome, very humble. <laughs> And uh, Grandmaster Diablo, I think, the, the, what the story of going back to him is he was influenced by Bruce Lee, Cato. That's what always he tell me the story. And uh, and I think, you know, he, he, you know, 1966, I think, Bruce Lee. And he wants to do this. I think he's influenced. He starts training multiple martial arts. Uh, eventually, he met a few t few teachers. Warang Arts. I, I will go over names, but that you know, from Farang Kwan, Taekwondo Akido, Warang Do, Sumo Do, Do Hapsu, all these systems. And a lot of people uh, don't know about the Korean martial arts. Everybody think Korean martial arts is Taekwondo and Akido. But uh, uh, if you go back before the invasion of 1910 to 1945, the systems before the Japanese uh, occupation, they were Chinese influence. And it's funny that, like, for example, my grandmaster Diablo told me this, but you will see that Anshi Jajnik in his book, and you know Anshi Jajnik, of course, right. it's one of yes, your mentors, right. if not mistaken, right? Uh, or one of the, your influence. Uh, it's one of your influence, right? Or I'm mistaken. Anshi Jajnik. Yeah, sure. yes. oh, no, yeah, 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 of course. Yes. Like me, he's yeah. kind of influence for sure, influence everybody. And he was telling that if you see Kwan Bop in, Kwan Bop in Korean, Kempo, Shuan Fan, or Kung Tao, they all mean the same. Yes. The method of fighting fist. And we have, uh, it's a good book that it is one, that have records for 1500s, right? It was one of the books was not destroyed. Uh, and you see techniques inside, you see. And fighting, and you know, like the weapons. Uh, let me see the angle. <laughs> right. And so military systems, and the armors, and the shields, and empty hand like kung fu. Um, they were take. They were bringing this. They were sending the the warang warriors. Right. So farang, it's like a knight. He represents the same like a shaolin to China, or a samurai to Japan. Right, so right. they're sending these people to study, and in that time, if you see the three superpowers there, it's Japan, China, and Korea, Shusun, right? In that, and and before I, it was several, it was Kaya, it was Paichek, uh, it was Sila, and Sila. it's on it's Sila history that if they unify and they create Shusun, the the morning call, right? Okay. By Shi Young, we talked about fifteen hundred years ago. And That's when the Warang started, right? The, 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 well, the ideal of the Warang was, and the Warang can be translated as the blossom of a flower or to bring the best from inside to outside world. So Actually, yes. it is said that the Warang influenced the samurai. They talk about that. You know, if you see the porcelain was invented supposedly by Warangs. The first astronomic tower was the Warang. That's why the golden age with Chile was a, a period of peace and prosperity. That's why they developed Angul and Anguk, you know, the language, the 24 characters, because the, the nobles, the Warang warriors, they will write in, in, in what they call Anja, what Kanzi, right? The Kanji in Chinese. 
Right. But they get this this alphabet for them. So um, it, 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 they were so developed as civilization. You know, the, when they they built this ideal was they were the doctors. They know how to gardening. They will they will know like they they train in these twenty four systems. That was idea weaponry. Horse riding, archery, spear, you know, everything, empty hand. Uh, wrestling was a serum, serum. It was kind of a wrestling techniques and many others. So th the idea was to, they already have this idea. Let's, the most complete I am, the better I can fight my enemy. And imagine China, United States, and Russia. Korea was getting techniques from everybody. I think everybody was trying to get things. But China was a kind of friend, let's say. They kind of pay, give some money, and they kind of help it. So, and, and they're getting, so they're sending these warriors there and getting all these knowledge from Ming Dynasty. So that's why you see systems like Doha Psu, like, what is that? My teacher told me when I was there in the Air Force and, and Os, uh, Osan, he, he went to Air Force in 1981. He told, he was entire walls. It looks like ninjutsu. I have pictures of that. Like and it looks like ninjutsu. You have zarabatana, yeah. You, you, you have like size and katana and all these weapons. It's like, oh, that Japanese said, no, no, no. This is Korean, and people don't know. But basically, for example, the rapsu was empty hand to weapon, and whip weapon will translate to empty hand. And my 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 teacher in Korea learned this, like other systems, like sumo do. One of the influence, he looked like tai chi was more meditation, more Buddhism, right? About philosophy and history. Right. What they sometimes they call Taigu Kwan. And it's what? An influence from Tai Chi Xuan or Tai Chi or, or, or Shaolin systems that they brought influence to Korea. What happened is after, so all these systems of Warang, for example, you will see that Warang Do, right? One of these, one of these four influence of the Warang systems was like, weapons and then the founder dr jubilee makes apkido so it was like chinese with japanese so anyway when it comes to 1945 we have apkido right so you have a uh, young sul shoi and it was not apkido it was yusu but they don't want the name of yusu why because they don't they hate the japanese japanese rape and destroy their culture they burn all the books and that's what i was telling this is one of the books that survive like hitler did in europe he survived it was not burned so that's why they they know the big influence of chinese system so in one way um it's like kind of a like Kim also have Chinese influence, right? Or Kung Tao, right? Or Xuan Fan, right? Uh, yeah, of and, course. Yeah, and, and so so we have the Kwamba. You will see our forms, they are circle, right? They come with speed, right? They come, they there's ah, but why that don't look Korean? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint in you. Because that was an Avarang forms, circular movements. And it reminds what the people will see my position. Like, well, that's Kimpo. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Farang. That's what I will joke back. And that's why I love Kimpo. I, my friends were Kimpo. When I saw Farang Musul, I said, well, this is an opportunity to keep my Taekwondo, Apkido, my weapons within the Korean system. Grandmas also do kickboxing. Grandmas do have wrestling in a kind of you have a grappling system structures like i have everything in one the traditional system with the modern right you put you also mix it up but talking going back to the traditional systems what happened then after 45 you see the apkido coming over and that's also grandmas have learned several influences of an apkido and the apkido and taekwondo old school itf and wtf and all this compliments the, what he did was well a kick is a kick a punch and a punch but that well i think it's funny that in the beginning you say a punch is a punch then a punch is not a punch and then when you master now it's just a punch right and grandmas were learning all the systems say well i i have these what is the kung fu one the apkido the taekwondo apkido you learned the influence from g and j that was direct uh, influence like like Warangdo and Cooks One have the direct 
influence from the old Aikido. It's more rigid. And if you would not know what is Aikido, uh, it was the students that give the name Aikido. So uh, Young Sul Shoi was adopted by Sokaku Takeda in Japan. Okay. And they gave him the name of Yoshida. One of his training partners was Moriai Yoshida from Aikido. So Moriai, when he left, he founded the Aikido. Young Sul Choi went left from Japan, come back to Korea. He, uh, he, um, when he came back, he found the Yusu, right? Uh, but the students give the name of uh, Aikido. So um, we have to know that a lot of the males from Kore Korean males, as the kids were sending to Japan during the occupation, so they become Japanese. So they can eradicate the culture, the Korean culture. So that's why the, you see like Taekwondo influenced directly General Shoi from Shotokan, right? And we right. have Taekwondo. Yeah, that Kido comes from Daito Ryu Aiki Jiu Jitsu from Sokaku Takeda that they call it was the last samurai, right? So they brought it back, they, right? So anyway, Grandmaster Diaba grabbed all these Korean systems and he was lucky to have wonderful teachers. And we'll take all our talking about all these teachers from several systems, but uh, he thought it was necessary to add more. And that's why the reason, like he put trapping and he had grappling and he had other, other teachers. So we're not going to say, oh, yeah, the Korean systems, they already have kind of um, of trapping. But, you know, evolve and you make it better. Learn Filipino martial arts. You have some influence. Even if we have a lot of weaponry already inside. But, of course, he put a lot of weaponry inside. And the Farai Musul became the system that tried to to domain all the distance. And I, for me, it was, was amazing because I felt that I can fight from outside, you know, like monitoring distance, and then I can close the distance with kicking, and then I go punching, I go trapping, trapping, I go grappling stand-up and grappling on the floor when I have chokes and takedowns and joint locks and pressure points. And all this in a very structured program and written, like Grandmaster, I say in a good way, it's, it's so... I don't want to call OCD, but he's super organized. And I love the structure, you know, take pictures and, and the belt and the names. And, and I love that because, and he, he, he kind of record everything. And I, I like, like, he's not kind of BS that say, hey, yeah, this is all Korean. He said, no, we have this traditional part, the influence from Korea, from these different systems, ones from more Chinese influence, others from Japan. And then with the touch of the Korean, of course, it become theirs korean right they put their own touch and he came with the system um and grandmaster was a boxer and like you know he started learning boxing in mexico with his uh, brother late brother sergio uh he was in the he have a, his father have a farm a quinta so he's a horse riding he's learning how to shoot in mexico do the lasso to the cattle and he started learning cuchillo right and machete, you know. So since the kid, you already have that influence from Mexico. He also say, "My, my, I'm a, he knows to be a knife guy." And say, "Yeah, I have this from Korean art, from Filipino, and from Mexican influence." <laughs> and then I create my own knife. I remember being with uh, Professor Muro, uh, uh, when I met him. We were in the memorial of a uh, Grandmaster Josef Albuna at Park. I met Grandmaster at Park Junior there, and Grandmaster Adrian Emperado, by the way. And a few more people were there. Uh, and it's like, hey, knife guy. He's a knife guy. The same with the Grandmaster Leon J. The same. They, they always call him the knife guy. And I love, love this. So anyway, going forward, uh, because of a lot of stick and knife and going to the seminars, like in Stockton, I start, I start creating a passion by the, the, the Kali, the Filipino martial arts. And like you told about, like the Filipino martial arts start around. I moved from Portugal uh, in 2000 and 2012. I moved from Portugal to United States, and I start in Balintawak, and then eventually in Serrada and Gironis Grima. And right now, I'm very dedicated to Stockton multi-style family from Stockton. 
uh, Master June, Master Terry, Master Jean Enes. I want to give credit to, to them and all the family. And I learned, I graduated last summer in Gironis Grima. So who don't know Gironis Grima? Leo, the late, he was um, a veteran from U.S. Marines, a Filipino. And he was the father of Largo Mano system in the United States and Europe. And uh, I, lo I, I love the system. We have close quarters and outside. Yeah. Uh, and then the Stockton movie style also teach uh, Serrada Grima from Dentoy Roy Villar. He was a student from Angel Cavales. He was a student from Gilbertinho from the Cuerdas. And he also was a student under Leo from uh, what they call the Bahana, the Giron Grima. And right now, that's the component that I'm trying to graduate, the Serrada Grima with Largo and the Cuerdas influence inside Spada and Dagger. Nice. So basically, this is the systems I've been dedicated, even if I'm graduating Taekwondo and Apkido by my teacher, by Korea, Apkido by Korea. If I show, let me see my camera. On the top one here, you will see the three top ones, I'll say, that my Apkido from Korea. The graduated from uh, Giron Isgrima from Stockton Movie Style family, and my fifth degree in Farid Musul. That I kind of, I kind of, you know, to all the respect my teachers, they know that Grandmaster is always like a father for me. And I feel I have a big um, respect to uh, respect that I have a big responsibility to represent modern Farid Musul. And I feel that is kind of the legacy. The other systems have plenty of people to represent. I'm a think I'm a little bit, you know, the other ones I, I love it to train, but I think, uh, you know, all my more passion and more time and responsibility as a direction from Grandmaster Diablo, it's in modern Farah Musul, uh, in this component of a Korean martial arts with uh, modern warrior. Let's call it the fusion of the old with the new. That's the modern Farah Musul, right? Nice. Musul means like Ushu or Jutsu, whatever you want to call it. It means war, art of war. So. Okay. Not as a door. So. Cool. Let's bring some of the people saying hello here. Okay. We have lots of comments. Where were we? Uh, let's see. Oh my God. There's so many people saying hello. Let's see. Diego Andres Albucci. Muy buenas tardes. Good afternoon, maestros. Saludos from Buenos Aires. Saludos. Uh, let's see. Who else is here? Rai Salano, hello, my brother. He already said hello. Saludos from Suecia, Edith Barrios. Oh, great. Awesome. Nice. Uh, Rafael Herrera, big salute from Spain. Grandes maestros, gracias. Antonio says, I remember, very impressive demo. Thank you, sir. Thank you for commenting and the support. Maestro Sami Ibrahim, salute, gentlemen. Salute. Juan Rodriguez, greeting from Laredo, Texas. I have a question in regards to Farang Musul. Is this art related to another Korean art? He's Rang Do. Okay. Well, uh, do you want me to answer, to reply to that? Sure, this question well, is Well, right. only Rang Do means the ones that follow. The ones that follow. Now, the art, we can say that's Warangdo, Farangquan, Taekwondo Warang, you know, Farangapkido. We have certain uh, variants of the system, right? That we can. But yes, we have we, uh, Grandmaster Diablo was one of the, he became, in fact, in uh, by Dr. Jubin Lee, he, he, he was in the time before, you know, he left. And we we wish all the best to them. He was one of he became one of his chief masters, and he was teaching in his school back in back in California. Then eventually, Grandmaster Diablo was learning several systems, and he thought that you know he wanted to put his own digital impression, and he, he kept moving forward. And but he, of course, he um, we wished all the best to everybody, right? But yes. We have Warangdo influence inside of Farang Musul. I'll be nice. lying if not. It's true. Nice, nice. Senior Master John Ward from Ireland says, Hi, Frank and Nelson. It has been a long time. From Ireland. Hello, sir. Saludos. American Kimper Grandmaster. 
from Ireland. Liga Jinx says, two amazing master, Master Nelson and Grandmaster Dialba. Thank you, sir. Sifu Ernesto Colbrenner, salud maestros, hug from the heart, from Argentina. Bagelis Drossos from Greece, maestro, salud, Master Frank. Salud, Master, thank you. Let's see. Maestro Jordi Bello says, thank you for mentioning Quam Bop. I did a video on Quam Bop, Korea's Kempo Legacy. I joy to watch your show, the Quam Bop influence to your Mosul. Thank you, Grandmaster Ravello. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sammy says, when you were in the air base, air base in Korea, did you find any Huarango schools or Quang Bop, et cetera? I was able to find Taekyeon at a temple, but mostly just Taekwondo and Hapkido. So it was not me. I, I was, uh, I was, when I was in Korea, I was with Kuxlo, Hapkido, Taekwondo people. We're talking now in 2000s. My teacher was in 1981. He went to air, it was in Air Force in Osan. And he was able to find the Dohap Su, uh, Dohap Su system. And he also trained, it was a Dohap Su. Let me, in fact, I have some notes here. Dohap Su was under, uh, t -t -t um, In Wan Chun, In Wan Chun. So uh, we went, the system, when he learned a lot, a lot of Eastern philosophy and culture that was based on the Warang warriors, but he, but Dohapsu was like weapons and striking. Imagine like a Shaolin system. It was not like Apkido and the big, it was, it was more sparring, like, like Kung Fu and weapons. And that was the influence for the Warang art. He also trained under, uh, he was his sergeant, Grandmaster James Gordon. It was Taekwondo Warang Do. And it was very uh, militaristic techniques. That's when Grandmaster Diablo trained special forces in the time there. Not to say that Dr. Jumbo Lee Warang do also have try a lot of techniques that what they call the Sulsa, special technician. There was also real, like some people call Korean ninja, but that's not the right term. It was like a, a special forces from Korea. Okay. Ninja was a mercenary. Right, they also militaristic. But going back to James, Grandmaster James Gordon, he's still alive, he's still in contact. He teach a variant of Taekwondo Warang Do. And he basically, Grandmaster Diablo always tell me that was one of the best fighters that he met. And he was like in the, you know, the air base, imagine American soldiers, glove on, and he was old school. They hitting hard to each other, you know, breaking boards. And you can't imagine that movies with Chuck Norris and other, that's kind of, what you can imagine, like Grandmaster James Gordon, tough American, you know, soldier teaching the, the old sergeant, teaching fighting. And that's the, in, back in Korea, well, he have other influence, but that was one, two of the top influence that he got. And then back in the United States, the, the Warang system that he had was then one park in San Francisco. There was the Farang Kwan, the Taekwondo Akido, the Sumodo, where were most more but Buddhist and mental development. And in the end of all that, you have Dr. Juban Lee. Dr. Juban Lee was the Warang Do. Like what we say, it was Um Yang with Apkido became Warang Do. It was like a Chinese influence art with more of Japanese influence art and became a Warang Do. Like just to try to, to explain, it's more complex than that. Okay. And that helped Grandmaster, that helped Grandmaster Diablo, this last system, to bring all these training together for a, a final structure with all the modern components right that's nice nice let's see sensei michael blackwell very complete system you know him right he's of a course. student from sensei janine and sensei john and angie Chesney. he's now my student and my brother and my training partner nice wow. salute yes he just moved to florida a couple of months ago right or yeah, I mean, it was like last year right he's 35 minutes away from me what is great we train Twice a week, at least six hours. <laughs> nice, nice. Manuel Ponce Mendoza, good morning from Chile, Master. Good morning. Your Bello says, enjoy meeting you in Colorado. Same here, sir. You're great. Thank you, sir. Iron Tiger says, Master Rebello, I remember watching your video about the Quan Bob being introduced from Korea. Yeah, I was showing some of the Sambondarius sequence. Nice. 
Hernán Alfiro, salud, Master Soto. Late, but tarde, pero seguro. Late, but uh, sure. <laughs> nice. Thank you very, for being here. Gracias. Hybrid Karate says, Nelson is a very talented and humble martial artist. He's one of the great ones who still study and train old school. People in the U.S. are lucky to have him. Nice. By the way, Sifu Renato is from, it's the one from Kaju Kim Angel Garcia, but I have to say, it's a true treasure in the Kempo world, or Kaju Kempo world. It's, you have to see it. It's technique. It's amazing. Like you, sir. He's amazing like you. <laughs> no, you're the man. You're the man. Okay. Sami Ibrahim says thank you. Lee Gajing says, my respects to you, Maestro Frank. Great admiration for your work. Thank you, sir. It's an honor. And it's not me. It's these guys that come to the show. They are the ones. I'm just the guy talking and interviewing them. But they're very talented martial artists. Thank you. Okay. So um, so you study. You've, your main art is the uh, uh, Farang Usul or the Korean style. But you're also you're a researcher. You're like a seeker of the truth, we should say. Um and just very curious martial artist, right? You're always looking. I'm very and, curious. And, I think, you know what? I think all martial arts are good. I'm out of politics. You know, a lot of times, you always have politics in Kimpo or inside of that Kido or inside of Korean martial arts. And this is the truth. This is it's like, I uh, I sincerely, I don't, I'm not in politics. I, I think I want to. Everybody, like I told you, I, I love people from Taekwondo, from Apkido, Kimpo. My best friends in Portugal was Kimpo and Kajo Kimpo and his Grima. So I love when I saw Farang Musul Grandmaster moving with some hands and the, the forms. Oh, this is Korean. And I can tell it was Pedro Puran, it was Sifu Renato that was talking there. Since uh, Professor Nunes from Lim Kimpo, uh, there are a few people, you know, uh, my friend from Apkido, Emmanuel, uh, Rui Lacerda, Monica Cote from Jiu Jitsu. There are so many. My, my teacher, crew, crew Carlos Spear from White Eye Kickboxing, Full Contact. Again, I have so many friends, and they're all so different. And I think they're all amazing. And I have no problem to promote other martial arts. What? Because because I want to promote my friends. And, you know, maybe it was funny that uh, Sifu Renato sent me a message. Said, hey, I need 30 minutes. I kind of don't agree with you. I kind of think it's about um, maybe the Kwambop history. But he's also, I have some documentation and stuff going on. And I'm not one to say that Farin Musul is Kempo. So understand people from Kempo. I'm not saying it's Kempo. It's not Kempo. Did Grandmaster of the album start with Shaolin Kempo? That was the from Grandmaster Carlos Navarro, still a good friend of him. That was on the line from Ralph Castro. Did we have a set on blocking? Oh, curious. It was from Chinese camp or from Shaolin camp. We have in Farin Musul, and we're not gonna say it's not it influenced Grandmaster of the album. So everything he trained or everything I train and I bring it to Farin Musul influenced me. You know, even when I do stock and multi style, I. You know, I love that guys, and they're giving me so much from his grima, and it influenced me because I think my teacher taught me knife and stick. I have the ball in the walk that I have to grab. I'm only fifth level. I'm not an instructor, but I love Grandmaster John Suriano and Grandmaster Bobby Tavoad, amazing martial artist. Uh, Grandmaster Carlito Bonjock, I spent many days there. You know Carlito from Serrada's Grima, the restaurant from right. Andrew I have so many people to give credit, and all of them made what I am today. You know, but of course, my top art and as as and like family, like familia, como un padre, right? Como a, como a, como a father for me is Grandmaster Diaba, right? That was me, Grandmaster Bobby Tabuada there, and me testing it for uh, was fourth level there, right in Seattle, and uh, yeah, he's trying, he's going fast on me. <laughs> See if I can block it. And um, yeah, that's a little bit there. Um, I, you can show also one of my videos, Join Locks. I think is a good video from Farai Musul since we talk a lot. If you can find one, we talk about Join Locks. Um, okay. So you can pass in the background. I think it kind of, yes. Um, and again, um, I think all martial arts are amazing. And, 
and I'm out of politics, you know. Uh, and that's it. I say I train Farang Musul right now. The top ones, Farang Musul. That's what I've been doing. Uh, I have always my kickboxing from crew Carlos Pedro and his Taekwondo influence old school on me uh, and his full contact. Um, I have the stock, the multi style that I love that guys. And I mean, really in a lot of training with them and they give it from the heart. I'm going to be with them very soon in South Carolina for a few days of training, very hard training, the old school. And I have two on Rigo Cortes, by the way, in Orlando, teach me catch wrestling. I go there once in a while, learn some, Improving my grappling. Uh, in fact, you have a court system where it's stick grappling, and I'm learning. And you know, um, and all these people may uh, that that one is in Korea. It's not that one, but okay. Um, that one was in South Korea. Grandmaster, they're always talking about some three types of energy: how to stop, redirect, and flow the technique. Yeah, I was in 2013, I think. In, that's Busan in 2013. We're representing the United States. It was a group of a group of masters from several arts, Korean arts, all together. We went to the event of Kido, Kido Federation. Nice. But again, I'm all for union and all for peace and brotherhood and uh, and to learn. Um, and I don't think it's the ultimate truth. I like what my grandmaster Dialba said that. He don't reinvent the wheel. He don't reinvent the wheel. We just did a new structure. Uh, and they, they, if you say, ah, oh, that looks Korean, but that looks Sila. Ah, oh, that looks Kempo. Ah, oh, that looks Wing Chun. Well, maybe because we put some concepts. We don't put systems there. And we cannot say that, oh, I'm certified on this. But do we have some concepts inside? We have. Because we, we understand the need. Like if you see some... Like some first teachers, like from Kaju Kimbo or other systems, they put a few systems in one, you know. Uh, at Parker, I think the Grandmaster Diaba, it's like the the late Grandmaster at Parker was from the Kimbo. I think Grandmaster Diaba is kind of do the same with, you know, not on his level, of course. Uh, Grandmaster at Parker Kimbo, it's like one of the legends that stay in history. And Grandmaster Diaba, it is for the Korean martial arts. And, um, uh, that's what he tried to do in his best intent. Um, and again, who wants to learn, learn with us. We don't want, don't learn. We don't force nobody. We're just us. And that's what he likes to to blend. It's art. That's what I'm so, that he goes from boxing to trapping to giant locks to chokes to pressure points to takedowns to the grappling and try to be effective to knife fighting, knife, knife disarm, sparring with weapons, of course, not only do the forms, uh, we do the forms, but what is the bunkai? We say bonhe, behind, what is the meaning of this movement? Not just memorize to memorize, uh, because or else the katas or the young, youngs, like we call youngs, lose the meaning. Uh, and doing it with intent, with intention, right? You know what I'm talking. You are one of the guys that I like the fire when we you do your techniques, like, ah, I love that, right? That's how I, when I saw you in, in Sacramento, it's like, this guy, I love him. Look, look at, ah, and your UK is flying, right? And I'm like, wow, awesome. I love that, you know, because the way you train, even if he's uncontrolled, then you know, you a master is a master, and not the master because he's the, 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 the belt. Not because of the certificate, but because the master control his technique, right? And and he's powerful and he trained to deserve that level. I think sometimes people mix a little bit what means to be a master, right? And it's the, the ears of training that you put behind. And when I saw, for example, you moving, I will say, Yeah, he's a master for sure. That speed, you know, beautiful. Thank you, sir. Uh, and that's when I see I, grandma through the alba. I, I I thought the same of you, man. When I saw you doing that demo and stuff, like, yeah, I like this. You know, yes. Like I saw my brothers just talk the movie style and all other the influence that I have. Right. And I think everybody is great. And that's what we have to promote is the martial arts. Yes. Not yes. tribal, you know, like we also tribal sometimes. And we don't have to, I only have time to have fun, have a beer and train hard. That's what I love. 
Let's see. Antonio says, Master Pinto is one of the most inspirational martial, martial artists I know. I am glad to have the opportunity to periodically train with him. He has helped me become a better Farang Mosul practitioner. Nice. Hybrid Karate says, I want, I want to disagree with you about giving credit to many, me also, and forget a little bit, a little about yourself. A lot. <laughs> We'll talk, buddy. Love you. <laughs> Emmanuel Fernando, hello from Portugal. Master Nelson Pinto, probably one of the best Portuguese martial masters. Uh, great skills. Yes, cool. Thank you, Kwanjanem. Good Let's friend. See. FMS, Cook Sanim. Sorry, I'm a little late. Had an important call with my brother in Mexico. Grandmaster Diawa. Saludos, Grandmaster. Thank you for being here, sir. And I got to say, I would love to interview you, sir. It would be an honor to have you on the show. I think you will be the best. If you want, you want the founder, that's the man to talk about. Oh, yeah, I would love to. It will be a true honor to interview him. Yes. Let's see. We have somebody asking a question here. Maestro Ribello. Let's see. Can you explain the influence of the use of the Okinawan Sai in your Musul system? Enjoy seeing your use of the weapon on video. So what I know is what the, the influence that I know about size from the system that he have, it was in Dohapsu. So um, I don't know nothing about the, I don't know the influence that was Okinawa in Korea. I'll be lying to you. The Grandmaster, I know that Grandmaster, of course, learned, learned the, the his first influence was in Dohapsu. He bought it to the system and probably put his touch and influence. I know he trained in other systems, Chinese and Japanese. Uh, maybe he had them a little bit more, but again, it's like we talk about movement is movement. Uh, but I know, and I have pictures from Doha Sul, and someday I can, we can talk, Grand Master Joe Roosevelt. I will try to find the pictures and share with you. There are all these weapons on the wall that Grand Master have from his teacher from Doha Sul. And, um, I know that one of his first influence was from Do Hapsu system, where he's like that Kung Fu weapon, Shaolin, but Korean style. So. Nice, nice. Let's see. Uh, Maestro Di Alba says, Master Pinto is a treasure, the best of old school and the new school. Nice. That's exactly that. That's for Father Musul. <laughs> nice. Let's see. Uh, he also says, claro que sí, mi hermano. Gracias, maestro. Gracias. Le voy, me voy a poner en contacto con usted para entrevistarlo. Gracias. Uh, Master De Vega, my brother Pinto, big hug from Puerto Rico. Love you, my brother. Nice. Para mi hermano, Boricua, from Puerto Rico. <laughs> Let's see. Maestro Diablo says, I studied Kabuto back in the early 70s. That was my first introduction to the Psy. And yes, to my pleasant surprise, I found this very weapon in Korea. So I have the answer directly from my teacher, Grandmaster Ravello. Nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Cooks and Nim. I appreciate that, sir. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Nice. Beautiful. So we have a little bit of time left. Um, so I wanted to ask you, sir. What are your plans for the future with this? You mentioned that you were, um, that this was like your legacy, you, that you represent the, Farang, the modern Farang Musul system and you are really into it. So what are, what are the plans for you to, you know, to promote and to do this and to honor your, your, your instructor, your maestro? Um, so uh, uh, since I have more time, you know, I was a few years that uh, after corrections, I dropped. Back in Portugal, I also taught like military. I went to Kuwait to also do some things and did a lot of seminars. So I'm going to want to bring all these influence. Like I know you, you, uh, you're like a policial instructor too in Mexico, right? Oh, you were. Oh, you are. So I uh, now I have the time since I'm no more on that. Uh, I went to other direction. Right. And I... Uh, I really now we're finally in Florida after 10 years. Uh, we've been like jumping around from California to New York, New York to Washington, Washington to Colorado to South Carolina, and now in Florida. 
Wow. And uh, we kind of really love uh, the Florida, but also um, my wife is very happy here. A happy wife, happy life. So um, I got already a student, uh, Sensei Mike Blackwell from Kosher and Serrat and Kobatan. I study a few arts. He's training with me uh, right away. We start, so it's good to have a training partner to train a lot of hours. But I want to look for a community center or a YMCA. Start, start slow uh, with two, three days a week. I want to start teaching Mother and Father Musul. Um, and I want to, and my influence in there. Uh, and also, the, this group, especially stock multi style, uh, I think is the minimum. I want to give the credit to the people that really invest a lot in me. Um, and I want to pass it to the, the new generation. Uh, it's more more that teach self defense and you know with the two maxims of the the two objectives for Musul always I think is it's about self defense but more important is about profession of character and I right. think if I help the young generation or also the old generation because it's fun to train with both with the kids but I love to train with the adults too you can do different things right sure. But it's important to have the kids so you can have the future, the legacy yes. to pass it on, right? It is very yes. important. And for me, uh, teaching is, if it was about the money, I was doomed, you know? I, I'm very passionate about martial arts. I have a job because of that, because I teach martial arts from the heart, you know? I have that problem, you know? It is important to make money. I'm not against that. Uh, but I want to teach a primary because it's something I need to do. It's something that inside of my heart, it's, 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 it's it makes me a better person. Like the farang meaning, right? That it means um, the blossom of the flower to bring the best from inside, inside to outside world. That's when I feel when I do a demo. It's when I talk about martial arts. When I have, uh, when I'm in seminars, what I like to go multiple seminars. You don't have to be farang musul, can be kimbo's grima. But I want to teach because it made me a better person, and I want to give my um, the best I can to the world. And I think that through martial arts, we can bring, uh, we can make a better world and more peaceful. If you teach it, if you teach it about egos and about, you know, be that critical teacher. You know, you you want to teach your skills and you want to be a better person and make others better person. Um, I think that uh, also teaching is learning two, three times more. So that's the, one of the super reasons I want to do it. It's because of the love and the passion and the importance that martial arts bring to the people nice. to become better. So that's nice. my first mission. Let's see. Emmanuel Fernando, we are waiting for the seminar in Portugal this year, sir. I'll be there, sir. <laughs> Hybrid Karate says, is it a sort southern Mediterranean island thing? That kind of hidden power and arg attitude? I think so, brother. You have it. I have it. But look, it's also, look our friends Latinos. Well, look, Grandmaster Frank Soto. Look how he moves. Sorry, sorry. We, we are El Guapo. Yeah, yeah. The, the Guapo. Muy guapo. We are. You, you can keep the ARG attitude. That's fine. We keep the Guapo part. Yes. Guapo and muy, muy, muy humilde. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. That's that. That comes with the Guapo thing. Yes. Yes, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Okay. If people want to get in touch with you, ever, uh, people that are watching, let me just share your. Uh, here we have your uh, Facebook uh, page. Right, I need to change that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, that's good though. Okay, and after, we also you know, have... after corrections, I drop it. I lost forty-five pounds. You know, I was able to train more. I have long shifts, and I was able to be a little bit better. You know, so taking care of me. So we have uh, the website that I have is pintomartialarts.com. I also have other websites. The old website is farang dash alliance.org that's other one um on facebook you can find me on pinto martial arts and farai musul and fma they're the two groups on youtube is very easy nelson pinto dash pinto martial arts on instagram is pinto martial arts so i try to be consistent <laughs> yes that's the other one it's my 
that was the first website. So it's probably have, I don't know, um, 15, 16 years old website. Let's see. YouTube, uh, yeah, that's my. It's opening right there. There it is. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I have some better videos there. You know, not all are good. You know, I cannot be perfect. <laughs> I try to have videos with jumping and kicking and scream, uh, show off, grappling, uh, joint locking. So try to entertain uh, my students and my friends. Yeah, that's my Instagram page. Nice. Well, I just got to say thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for your time. Much appreciated. Uh, congratulations on all your success and all your work. And I wish you the best, my friend, and hope to see you back here soon. Well, I hope so, too. And I wish the same to you. Again, it's a big honor. Like, uh, I really appreciate, you know, I'm a huge fan of you. I, I got your videos. You know, I, I think you're awesome. You know, it's, it's, I just, I just like, like you flow, man. You like, it's like music, you know, but like ACDC type, you know, fast and hard and, 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 and magnificent, you know, it's just perfect. So I, I think to all my friends that do Kempo and they don't know Grandmaster Frank Soto, I know some people were there, you know, I think you guys need to uh, kind of look uh, what he's doing. Uh, and it's, it's, it will be great if you guys want to bring him to Portugal in special. I have some people in Europe. I think you guys going to have a great seminar with Grandmaster Frank Soto. So, Well, thank you, sir. Thank you for the support and thank you for this interview. And for everybody that watched this, thank you so much for your comments and your time. Let's see, we have, let's see, I think we have somebody else saying hello or saying, hold on, give me a second. There we go. Oh, yeah. Master Juan Martin Alvarez. Salud from Argentina. Saludos, Master. Gracias. Antonio says, thank you, gentlemen. Peace and love. Farang. Thank you. And thank you, sir. Take care, everybody. This was great. Thank you so much. And see you soon. Thank you, sir. Take care.